Hello everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Halo's multiplayer. Now, this is a very controversial topic because there's so many Halo games, but I think I can cover which one is the best one in this video. So, what it will range to is worst to best. Which one's the best, which one's the worst. But we'll start with worst and go up till we get to the best multiplayer. Now, this won't be off of any bias because I like all the multiplayers of Halo, but I'm going off of what fans thought and how the game differed in a bad way or a good way. So please stay tuned for this video and let's get on. Starting off with number whatever it is, we have Halo 4. Now, before I get a bunch of angry 343 players, people start playing Halo when 343 took over. Halo 4 is pretty much Call of Duty in the sense that you can start out with different weapons than other people. Kind of like Call of Duty where you have a loadout, right? So, depending on how good your loadout is, you can start out with something decently better than someone else has. Let's just say a noob joins the server and he's using an assault rifle because that's all he has because he does not change his loadout. Then you have a pro who has the battle rifle. We all know who's going to win, the battle rifle dude. Not just because the other guys are new, but it's because he has a battle rifle and the other guy has an assault rifle. There's no chance. So conferring from this, that is not a fair start because Halo's always started with fair starts. Everyone used to start with the assault rifle and the magnum. Everyone. Same armor ability, which sometimes in the older games there were no armor abilities. And same health stats and everything. So Halo 4 makes it the bottom of the list because it differed so much from the other games. The art style, I'm not judging games by the art style. Well, I'm not a fan of Halo 4's art style at all. I cannot use that to make it the worst. But I can use facts to make it the worst. Also, certain armor abilities, like Promethean Vision, very unfair advantage against enemies who either didn't know what it was or just didn't like using it because they prefer something else, like Thruster Pack or something else like that. Um, but yeah, Halo 4 was just very unbalanced. People would either have better weapons or better armor abilities than others, so it made an unfair advantage. Next, we go on to Halo Combat Evolved. Now, I know I'm probably going to get a ton of hate from saying that, but, think about it guys, I know Halo Combat Evolved started all of Halo, but it's mainly it's campaign is what started Halo. Now while it did have a bunch of multiplayer stuff back then, it wasn't online with Xbox Live, it was System Link. Now there's nothing wrong with System Link, and that's not why it makes it at the bottom. There's only one thing that ruins the multiplayer for Halo Combat Evolved, and that is the Magnum. Now, the Magnum is a good weapon. And I know everyone starts out with it, but if you're not good at Combat Evolved and someone else is, you get wrecked the whole time. It makes a bunch of people leave, which is why when Halo Combat Evolved released on PC, not very many people played it. Also, Halo Combat Evolved just has very unbalanced weapons. Like in multiplayer, don't even use the assault rifle. It, it's garbage. It doesn't work at all. It hardly does anything. Um, there's many bugs and glitches in Halo Combat Evolved as well that ruin the gameplay experience. But, not trying to say Halo Combat Evolved is a bad game, it is still very fun and still a lot of people play it, and it is definitely not the worst. It's just on the bottom of this list. And this list is not the main list of Halos. This list is what I think. So if you have any controversial feelings about this, tell me down below in the comment. Next we have Halo Reach. While Halo Reach is my favorite Halo, it is not the best multiplayer, even though I don't mind it. But I can't use bias, so I can't put it on the top like I'd want it. But Halo Reach was ruined by Bloom. Now Bloom is where you have your reticle on the side of your screen, right? Well, every time you fire, it expands. It makes your gun more and more inaccurate, which means you cannot spam weapons such as the DMR or the Magnum, uh, making them very inaccurate and very hard to use. Now. The reason I like Halo Reach is because if you're good with those weapons, you do a fantastic job making you feel more powerful and stuff like that. But otherwise, 
Bloom almost ruined that game. But luckily, it was still a very popular, very good Halo game. Still one of my favorites. But, Halo Reach is still a little far down the list because of Bloom and because of the newly added armor abilities. Now, Halo hadn't had any armor abilities besides pickups you can get in Halo 3, like such as drop shield and stuff like that. But those did not change the game at all. Well, they did, but they did not ruin the game. But Halo Reach decided to do a different way where you could spawn with these armor abilities. Uh, one of them was Sprint, which I really didn't mind the Sprint. I don't know why people hated it so much. Uh, there was jetpack, drop shield, which no one uses drop shield. Uh, there was evade. There was uh, there was armor lock. Now, all of these abilities were fine, but armor lock. Armor lock is the most rage-inducing thing in the game. Now I know in my YouTube videos, I don't rage at all when I play the games. Well, I'll have to look through my own videos to see that, but I am a very competitive gamer. I do not just play the game to just play the game. I play the game to win, earn points, get to the top rank, become a pro. That's how I play games. It's natural for a lot of people, uh, but I probably get that from my father because he's the same way as me. I'm just not as bad, um, which I'm very good at Halo. I have my good days, my bad days, um, but uh, Halo Reach armor lock is just, no. It is not fair <laughs> that you are able to be invincible for a full 10 seconds. Actually, I think it's like 6 or 7 seconds still. And when someone punches you while you're, people would spam the armor lock when you're trying to melee them and it would disable your shields and make you walk slow and they'd end up killing you. Literally, armor lock is super annoying. Now you can still easily kill someone using armor lock who doesn't know how to use it. But if you know how to use armor lock, then you're gonna wreck everyone because you know how to disable people's shields by using armor lock. And that's why the other reach is in this spot at the list. Next, we have Halo 5. Now, while Halo 5's campaign was garbage, its multiplayer was phenomenal with awesome maps, and they got their lesson learned from Halo 4 that they are not Call of Duty. So, no longer do you have loadouts unless you play Warzone, but that's fair because everyone, uh, because it's Rex, it's different. Warzone is a different story. I'm talking about arena multiplayer. Um, you start out with the assault rifle and the magnum. Everyone starts out with that. Uh, everyone has sprint. It's not just some people. Everyone has thruster not just some people and everyone has ground pound and uh melee theme of hover i forgot what it's called even though i play halo 5 <laughs> now i have not made a video on halo 5 yet but i plan to do it in the future i do play halo 5 on my xbox one but besides the point halo 5 has a very 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 balanced multiplayer very fair everyone has the same advantage uh there uh, power weapons in the middle of the map be evenly placed between both teams sides spawn bases so that you can fight to the death to whoever gets the weapon. It's all about skill in Halo 5. Now, Halo 5 did have its flaws in its multiplayer of course, which I don't really know any, but uh, Halo 5's multiplayer was very good and uh, very... The population is very high still, and it's helped with its bad campaign. It, what it, it took all the bad thoughts of its campaign away with its awesome multiplayer. Next, we have Halo 2. Halo 2 was a very, very, very big step for Halo or Bungie because Bungie made Halo 2. Halo 2 probably had one of the best multiplayers. Halo has ever experienced and this is because of how balanced it was now there's plenty of bugs and glitches which I'll get onto in a second but with the new battle rifle that came out everyone started with the battle rifle and the magnum or the battle rifle and the SMG depending on which game mode but Halo 2 has some of the best maps and some of the most balanced multiplayer 
that apes made MLG championships become a thing for Halo. Because Halo Combat Evolved did not have Xbox Live online multiplayer like Halo 2 did. And Halo 2 was a very big step for Bungie when it came to Halo. Now, bugs and glitches for Halo 2, there's a lot, and it almost ruins the game sometimes. Sometimes, depending on which, on what you're standing on, if you're in the corner of an object that's faced like this, and you're in the middle of that corner right there, and a grenade blows up, it sends you flying out of the map, and it's impossible to, like, get back on land, you get flown out of the map, very unfair, but very funny. Next bug is where I forget what it's called, uh, cause my controls are different. I use the universal recon. So for me, it is B for melee, right bumper to reload, and then fire is right trigger, but that's like how it is for everyone. Um, if you do this combo, it makes you, it, uh, your reloading animation gets uh, interrupted by your melee, and your melee animation gets interrupted by your firing, basically making it to where you can instantly kill everyone you are like a foot from. Like, you can melee them, and then in the middle of the melee, which still does the damage, shoot them in the head and kill them instantly. Now, when I first played Halo 2, I was probably about 10, I thought someone was hacking, because they kept doing that to me, until my dad showed me how to do the combo, which, my dad doesn't play much Halo anymore, but, uh, with Halo Infinite coming out, which saw the gameplay, uh, we're gonna review the gameplay, uh... He's excited. He's getting all hyped up for Halo, so. But yes, Halo 2 was a very good multiplayer. Now we have Halo 2 Anniversary. Now, most of you may be asking, what's the difference between Halo 2 Anniversary and Halo 2? Well, Halo 2 Anniversary is balanced a little bit differently. Some weapons do more damage, some weapons do less damage. For instance, the pistol in Halo 2 Anniversary is not complete garbage if you're dual wielding it with an SMG, but it does a little more damage than the original Halo 2 pistol did, which makes it a lot better to use and a lot easier to use too. The sniper rifle has a slightly bigger reticle, making it easier for people to use. Basically, weapons got easier to use, but that also made the game harder for pros, which pros liked that a lot because the game was a lot harder than normal Halo 2, which is why I don't play much of Halo 2 Anniversary because I prefer normal Halo 2 better, but once again, my opinions on this video cannot be biased. Halo 2 was very Halo 2 Anniversary was very balanced, had little to no bugs, and had very good performance and quality. While it is in the Halo 4 engine, it still felt like Halo 2, and that's why it's this high on the list. And the last, but not least, definitely not least, and I know you guys were expecting it. Halo 3 is the number one best Halo multiplayer that's ever been experienced on Halo. You know why? Because of how many people were playing it at the time it came out, bunches of memories were made together with the fandom, and it was perfectly balanced. No longer could you laser someone across the map with a sniper rifle or a battle rifle. You could with a sniper rifle. but you have to lead your shots. So basically, it's no longer hit scan, it's now leading, which I don't have a problem with. I hate getting lasered across the map. Basically, Halo 3 requires a lot more skill, which means it's a better game because people were inspired to get better. Because of its good ranking system, people were inspired to keep ranking up to get the best armors and to get the coolest ranks. Now, uh, I play on Xbox One and Xbox 360, and the population on Xbox 360 is still decent for Halo 3, while it is definitely nowhere near Halo on the Xbox One or PC. On PC, it's about 50,000, Xbox One, it's say 80,000. Uh, Xbox 360 only has 1,300 people online, but you can still find a match if, you, if you're if you patient enough. Now, I'm a patient person, so I end up waiting for 10 minutes sometimes, and I eventually find one. But Halo 3, totally like totally totally to is the best halo game ever campaign awesome but this isn't about the campaign i'm just saying that helped out a lot too halo 3's multiplayer was very skill based and inspiring if you're wanting to rank up and grind uh 
Its ranking system was very interesting too. Winning a match gets you 1 XP, losing a match gets you 0 XP. You get true skill for each match you win. You lose true skill for each match you lose. So, if you end up getting to 50 true skill, you are very good at the game. And, if you end up getting to max rank, you are very appreciated by your peers in the video game. But yes, Halo 3 has the best multiplayer with the most balanced weapons. No weapon is useless in Halo 3. Literally none. Though, there were some cons to the game, such as the Needler. The Needler totally made people really mad, because the Needler was way too overpowered, but that's a minor thing. Uh, the Energy Sword also had some glitches, like you'd go to stab someone and it would make the sound and drag you towards them and everything, but it wouldn't do any damage and they just end up killing you because the Energy Sword is really slow in Halo 3. Also, the Gravity Hammer in Halo 3 isn't very good either because of how slow it is. Sometimes you have no time to react. If you're fighting with someone who has an Energy Sword and you have a Gravity Hammer, they're going to win most of the time. I'd say 80% of the time, Energy Sword will win because it's much faster and has much further range than the Gravity Hammer. But, that being said, that's the only game, like, that's the only problems with Halo 3. But yes, those that was my list for best Halo games, Halo multiplayer, out there. And uh, if you guys want to see more content like this, please comment down below what you want me to do next. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll try to upload more frequently, and I'll see you guys in the next one.